quick introduction into matter and mass. Matter we define as anything in our universe that not only has mass, but occupies some sort of space. And typically matter is going to come in three forms, at least three forms that we're typically concerned about in living organisms. Either a solid form in which the shape and volume of that matter is fixed, a liquid form in which matter takes the form of its container, think like water, right? Or when matter is a gaseous state, it fills up the container, it expands to fill up the entire container. So matter can change between these phases, between these states, but regardless of what state it's in, it always occupies space and it has mass. So you may have heard the term mass before, and it may have been interchanged with weight, uh, but that's a common misconception. So when we talk about mass, we're really concerned about how much matter is in an object. And how much matter is in an object is a relation to how many atoms are in that object, the density of those atoms, how tightly packed in there, and what type of atoms are they? Is it going to be mostly oxygen atoms or carbon atoms, or are we going to have some lead atoms in there, right? So the type of atoms and which element they come from can greatly influence the mass of an object. And mass is independent of gravity. Weight, when we're talking about weight, we're often talking about the force that gravity exerts on an object. So this is why we get the idea of being weightless in outer space, right? The amount of force that gravity exerts on an object is directly proportional to its mass. So the mass will remain the same regardless if we're on the moon or in outer space or here on Earth, but the weight will change. Often when we are measuring mass, we can measure how much force it takes to accelerate an object, because force equals mass times acceleration, and we can solve for the variable mass there. But usually when we're in the lab, we compare our sample to a known standard, something that has 10 grams of mass or one kilogram of mass, to evaluate what the mass of our sample is. Even though matter can change state and molecules can rearrange from one form to another, from one type to another, regardless of any chemical changes that might occur, the amount of matter, how many atoms are in that system, as long as that system is closed, the number of atoms in that system will remain the same. The total quantity of matter stays the same, as long as it's in a closed system. Closed systems don't often exist in the real world though. So for example, if we had a pile of wood and we built a campfire, if we could determine the total amount of matter in the wood that we're burning, and then afterwards determine the amount of matter in the ashes that are left over, in the logs that are left over, and determine the amount of matter that was captured in the smoke that was produced, because that smoke represents carbon dioxide and water vapor that were trapped in the wood and the stuff that we were burning, the amount of matter in the wood when we started versus the amount of matter in the ashes and the smoke should be the same. So closed systems are not common in the real world, but we can assume in labs sometimes that we'll have a closed system. Um, so another example is um, when we eat food, right? We're eating matter, we're eating molecules that are composed of atoms. We rearrange those molecules into different forms, we break them down, and the amount of matter is, remains the same. Some of it gets absorbed into our tissues, some of it is excreted as waste, whether carbon dioxide or water or other forms of waste. So it's difficult to verify by just simple measurement, by measuring the mass of food that we produce and then the mass of waste we produce, because it's often <laughs> difficult to determine where did all of that matter go.